Okay, so you've clicked on the link to this video because you want to go ahead and go through drafting and interpreting financial statements. So let's get into it. So I've got some questions on the screen here that we're going to go through and I'm going to give you my answers and I'm also going to try and test your knowledge. So you could use this video as a question, take time, maybe pause the video and then answer and compare answers to what I'm going to give you as well. So this is going to help you with that, those first questions in the draft and interpreting financial statements exam at AAT. So we'll start off really easy. So we've got question one just here, which is what is the accounting equation? So before you start getting confused with this, just try and take a really logical approach to it. So the accounting equation is assets minus liabilities equals equity. So what we mean by that is if we were to look at a balance sheet, you're gonna have assets at the top minus any liabilities, and that's gonna give you all of your equity. So technically, if we look at this another way, all of the money that's been introduced by the business owner or profits year to date, etc., and dividends and shares and all the rest of it is going to be sat in equity down here. So you can't have any assets and liabilities without having equity first. So that's why all of your assets minus all of your liabilities equals equity. So I hope that sort of helps answer that question a little bit better for you. And in fact, I'll pull a balance sheet up on screen just so you can see what that looks like. So here is a really good example on screen. So there we've got all of our assets up at the top and then all of our liabilities just here. So those that are due um, in less than 12 months and those that are due in more than 12 months. And that gives us £21,363,691. And if we scroll down and we look at capital and reserves, you'll see that all of the share capital, all of the reserves brought forward, etc., profit in the year, um, adds up to 21 million and odd, round it up. So you can see that, that all of the assets minus all of the liabilities equals equity. So there you go. Now, which of the following statements is correct? So is income minus expenses going to equal profit or loss for that year? Or is it income plus expenses? So I'm gonna give you an example again, just with this set of accounts that I found on Companies House. When you're studying and you're learning um, bookkeeping and accounting, go on Companies House and have a look at what a real set of accounts looks like, because that really helped me when I was studying to picture what all of this looks like in reality. So basically, if we add all of our income and then all of our expenditures together, that's not going to equal our profit or loss. So logically, if we have all of our income and then we take away all of our expenditure, that's going to give us our profit or loss in that year before tax. And then we apply tax and then that gives us an amount afterwards. So here you can see in this example that there's turnover here of 106 million, cost of sales, which are 95 million ish, gross profit, and then all of these expenditure items are um, in a bracket, so in a negative. And we're taking those off and adding any income as we go. So your incomes are a positive on here and your um, expenditure is a negative. And that's given us, again, this bottom line here. So let's have a look at these examples so we can confirm this numerically um, as well. So here we've got some examples um, that should say assets and then with equity and liabilities. So bearing that in mind what we've just learned, if we take assets minus liabilities, that should give us equity. So if you're ever faced with this sort of question in an exam, it should be quite easy for you to decide which one of these answers is correct. And most likely you're going to be given a multiple choice. So if we just did the maths and we did um, 30,000 minus 25,000, that should give us five, which is equity. So we know that the top one is correct, but we'll just do the rest. 25,000 minus 3,000 doesn't add up. 16,580 minus 2,000 doesn't add up. And then I guarantee this was not gonna add up either. No, it doesn't. So this top one's correct. So next we've got a question that says, what do we think is the objective of financial statements according to the conceptual framework for financial reporting? Now. Everything that you learn in AUT, in the textbook, in the tutorials and workbooks can be found within legislation that's available online. So if you go ahead and search for IAS1 presentation of financial statements, you will find an answer to this. So I've just pulled that up on the right hand side here um, through IASplus.com. And it states here that the objective of financial statements um, is to provide information about the financial position, financial performance and cash flows of an entity. 
that is useful to a wide range of users in making economic decisions. And to meet that objective, financial statements provide information about assets, liabilities, equity, income and expenditure, including gains and losses, contributions by and distributions to owners and cash flows. And that that information, along with other information in the notes, assists users of financial statements in predicting the entity's future cash flows, and in particular, their timing and certainty. So I highly recommend that you go ahead and have a look through IAS1 because it does give you a heck of a lot of information and will help you in the long term as well if you know more about IAS1 and the reason why we do what we do when we look at preparing financial statements and this is an entire exam um, to be honest. So next, identify three stakeholders of a set of financial statements and what their purposes using financial statements would be. So stakeholders, if you didn't already know, come in a number of different forms. So a stakeholder is essentially going to be somebody that's going to be using the financial statements, possibly to make a decision of some kind. So if you look at it like that, you can quite easily identify who these stakeholders are. So anyone is going to have some kind of interest in these financial statements. So internally, your employees are going to be a stakeholder. Anybody who wants to invest in um, a company is going to be an external stakeholder. Um, so a shareholder maybe um, who's already invested in the company or maybe um, an angel investor who's looking to invest in the company who hasn't yet done so. Um, so there's three already. Um, but also um, you could have the likes of suppliers um, are going to have an interest in your company. Customers are going to have an interest in your company. Um, anybody who's going to be using those financial statements to make some form of decision. Hence why we need financial statements to give a true and fair view because ultimately people are going to be using a set of financial statements to make a decision. So um, again, when we're looking at the why those individuals would use that information, well, um, employees might be interested in a set of financial statements because of job security, or they might, um, for instance, um, want to um, understand how the company is performing. An investor would be using a set of financial statements in order to make a decision whether or not to invest, obviously. Um, creditors might use a set of financial statements to deem whether or not a particular company has um, a good credit. So um, for instance, if a company decides that they want to go ahead and buy an asset tomorrow and they need that asset on finance, so asset finance in particular, then that company is going to look at this company and look at through the financial statements, etc., to make a decision on whether or not they would lend to that company, for example. And also, um, customers might want to have a look at financial statements because, for instance, they might not wish to work with a company who doesn't hold the same um, general beliefs that they do. So let's just say, for instance, that a company is very green and they've got um, you know, a zero carbon footprint, for example. That might be really important to um, a potential customer. So therefore, they're going to have a look through a set of financial statements to see whether or not that is the case, whether that's been reported on, etc., and then make a decision. So those are just some really, really general sort of ideas of typical stakeholders of a set of financial statements. Next, explain what qualitative characteristics are. So essentially, when we're looking at qualitative, not quantitative. So if you think of quantitative as anything to do with numbers, it's very numeric, qualitative is something very different. So there's two um, particular fundamental um, qualitative characteristics, which are relevance and faithful representation. So we've already touched on the faithful representation a little bit, um, but relevance is also very important. And then we've got a further four enhancing qualitative characteristics, which are comparability. So when you look in a set of financial statements and you see that they've got year one and then year two, that's comparability, comparing one to the other verifiability so essentially um, it should be a case that if anyone else was to prepare that set of financial statements they would come up with the same story as what the financial statements are shown at the minute so as in the same number of assets and you know how the company's performed in the year it should be exactly the same so we should be able to verify um, the figures behind um, the financial statements and the story that it's telling so with timeliness, what we're saying is that we need to ensure that the reporting and the information that we are producing on a company um, is timely enough for the users of that financial information to make decisions. So there's no use in, for instance, when you're preparing a set of management accounts and preparing them three months after the month end, because by that point, thing, other things have happened, changes have happened in the company, and they're no longer as useful as they were if they'd have been produced the day after the month end for instance. And next, understandability. 
So set of financial statements must be understandable by the users of the financial statements. So again, making sure that where there's ambiguity, um, that's taken care of in the form of a note to further explain something that's happened in those financial statements in that period of time. So that's that. So I'm going to add the answers to the Excel sheet that I've got over here and I'm going to pop that into Podia for um, the subscribers of Podia and I'll leave a link to Podia below, which is a free community you can join of mine. Um, where you can download various um, student resources, etc. But yeah, if you liked the video, then give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing as always, and I'll see you on the next video.